In the 2020 season, the NBA's Most Improved Player Award was a race between two elite candidates. In one corner, we had Brandon Ingram, who, for the New Orleans Pelicans, emerged as one of the NBA's elite young scorers. Ingram put up almost 24 points per game at the age of 22, and of course would end up winning the award. But if the vote were to take place after the playoffs, well then certainly, runner-up Bam Adebayo would have had a serious case for taking home Most Improved Player, as in year three, Bam made his first All-Star team, then took a tremendous leap in the playoffs and helped the Miami Heat reach the NBA Finals, a run that has to make him one of the most promising young players in the NBA today. With that said though, when looking at most improved candidates for next season, one player to me stands out. As playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder in just his second year, Shea Gilgis Alexander, the centerpiece of the Paul George trade, played so well that if things end up finishing poorly in the Kawhi Paul George era in Los Angeles, it has got to be said now, Clippers fans are going to view Shea as the young star who got away. Because let's let it be known, Shea Gilgis Alexander has already proven he has potential star power in the league and as you are about to see in this video, the Thunder have found themselves a player to build around for the foreseeable future. So what's up guys, Mike here and today we are going to be talking about Shea Gilgis Alexander. We are going to deep dive into the awesome season he had this year. We are going to look at his future potential as a number one option and we are even going to go back to his Kentucky days and try to make sense of why Shea was under the radar when the 2018 draft rolled around. Before we do that though, I do want to say please make sure to like this video and subscribe if you are new to this channel. Leaving a like helps me out a ton for YouTube's algorithm and thank you guys so much. Lately you just have been crushing it with likes, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. As of right now, about 54% of people who are watching my videos are not subscribed to the channel. It would be awesome if we could get that number up, so make sure to subscribe and for now, let's get into this video. But before we continue, guys, I do want to say thank you to Finimize for sponsoring today's video. Now, are you someone who's always wanted to start investing, but you don't really know where to start? If that is the case, then Finimize has you covered, guys. They will teach you how to start investing like a pro. Because Finimize is an app that includes all of the information and tools that you're going to need to start investing with confidence. It has daily morning briefings, audio and text investment guides, exclusive interviews, and more. Then on top of all of that, the premium insight section breaks down trends, opportunities, opportunities and strategies that are all designed to help you invest. And there's even a community section where you can talk to others about investments. I love this feature because it allows everyone to learn from each other and have some awesome conversations. Interacting with other people who are also learning is always a way for both of you to get better. So if you are interested, Finimize is also hooking us up. Right now, if you click the Finimize link in my description, you will get a free seven day trial and then 20% off a yearly subscription after that. That is an amazing offer, guys. Trust me, click the link right now, download Finimize, and start investing. It is fitting that Shea Gilgis Alexander plays for the Oklahoma City Thunder because we've already seen a guard in exactly Shea's situation not only thrive when finally getting enough touches, but we've also seen that player reach the top of the NBA. We've seen James Harden, of course, become an NBA MVP. And I know immediately what you're thinking, that this is certainly a stretch of a comparison, and I get that. I'm not saying that Shea is going to rise to become an MVP. What I am saying, however, However, is that the potential for Shea to become a franchise player and a multiple time all-star is certainly there. The evidence is all around us in what people have said about Shea, the path that he has taken to get to the NBA, which we'll get to later on, and it is certainly clear when looking at Shea's numbers. Because in terms of the James Harden comparison here, when looking at both players' rookie season, we find that the two players were remarkably similar when comparing their points per game, assists per game, rebounds per game, PER, and true shooting percentage. And if that doesn't impress you well in year two, Shea actually proved himself to be a noticeably better player, at least stats wise, than James Harden. As you can see in every category except for true shooting percentage, Shea has James B. Going further here, just looking at Shea's second season in general when compared to other 21 year old players throughout NBA history, we find that Shea is just one of 12 players to ever average at least 19 points, five rebounds, and three assists per game at the age of 21. This list of course contains elite names. It has all-stars, MVPs, Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers, and it has Shea Gilgis Alexander. That says a lot, and what's also very important to note here is that of these 12 players, Shea ranks 11th in usage percentage, meaning he was able to achieve these numbers with less of an opportunity to create plays on the offensive end. Now, of course, the reason for this, and the reason why I think Shea is about to be unleashed next season, is the addition and probable subtraction of Chris Paul from the Thunder's roster. Now, 
let's make this clear right now. Having Chris Paul as a mentor for a full season is the best thing that could have possibly happened for Shaq. In the NBA, a player's early career is completely dictated by what team drafts him and then in Shea's case, any team he could potentially be traded to. Which means having a Hall of Fame point guard to help mentor him for a full season is equivalent to Shea winning the NBA jackpot of potential teammates. And the result of this mentorship on Shea's on-court play this season was clear. One Eastern Conference scout had this to say about Shea. Quote, he learned a lot from Chris this year, how to control the game, understanding how and when to pick your spots to take over. Which meant in year two, we've seen a potential star emerge before our eyes as Shea became an offensive force playing off the ball for the Thunder. When watching him attack the rim, the word shifty certainly comes to mind, as he is able to change speeds when driving to the basket in a way that perfectly confuses his defenders and allows him to gain an advantage that results in either him finishing at the basket or getting fouled. In particular, as an offensive player, Shea has been at his best in isolation situations, which is very interesting when considering his low usage percentage. That we will get to in a second. For now, looking at the 31 players in the NBA this season who played in at least 30 games and averaged at least two isolation plays a game, we find that Shea ranks ninth in isolation efficiency, just one spot below Luka Doncic and ahead of players such as LeBron, Giannis, Russell Westbrook, Devin Booker, Jason Tatum, you get the point. Shea has shown that he has the potential to become an elite isolation weapon for any NBA team and going further here. As I said before, this is very interesting because while Shea was a solid isolation player as a rookie, he didn't get many isolation opportunities for the Clippers as he had just 47 for the entire season last year. This season though, Shea finished with around 190 isolation opportunities and despite this huge increase, his efficiency barely took a hit and his turnover rate actually went down. This is awesome news for Thunder fans because it gives us a clear example of Shea gaining more offensive responsibility in between year one and year two, and with that increase in responsibility, Shea has thrived. Furthermore, playing with two other point guards in Chris Paul and Dennis Schroeder this season has made Shea a more versatile player, which could potentially make him a perfect fit if the Thunder were able to land another star on their roster. As a Western Conference scout has said about Shea, the more versatile you can be as a point guard. If you can play off the ball as well, the more valuable. If he's playing with a super star, say Giannis or LeBron, KD, those elite players and wings are going to have the ball in their hands. For him to play off of it and be a threat is a plus. That is certainly something we need to keep in mind and is a great point. I think that Shea is definitely the type of player who is going to be able to coexist with other NBA stars. I mean, just this season alone, we've already seen that with Chris Paul. With that said though, let's get to the big question here. If Chris Paul is gone and the Thunder hand Shea the keys to the offense, if they decide that he is their potential franchise player going going forward, is he going to be able to step up in the spot? I personally believe he will. I think his growth as a player in the NBA so far has certainly indicated that, and I also think that his insane work ethic, something that we have not yet mentioned, is going to help him become an all-star level talent at the very least. Because when looking at Shea's career as a whole here, it's not just his play in the NBA that makes me think this. In fact, I think Shea's one season at Kentucky really tells us what we need to know about his potential future development. Because the thing is, in in college, the signs for a future star were right there in front of us, and I really don't understand how NBA scouts and general managers did not see this. Because to put it simply, Shea is a physical freak, he is a 6'5 point guard with a 6'11 wingspan, and those types of physical gifts are God-given. You obviously cannot teach them or work on them, and so instantly as an NBA prospect and as an NBA player, Shea had and has a serious advantage over other NBA guards. Still though, headed into his only season at Kentucky, Shea was slept on by both recruiting sites and the NBA. According to ESPN's recruiting website, Shea was ranked not only just the 35th player in his class, but in terms of just Kentucky's recruiting class, Shea was ranked 7th out of the 8 players who committed to the Wildcats. 7th. That meant that not only was Shea not expected to be a star for Kentucky, but that also, he wasn't even supposed to be a starter. This is the perfect example of people not only overlooking Shea's talent, but also, this was a perfect example of how Shea's relentless work ethic has allowed him to simply get better than others around him. As in November, 
in his first seven games with Kentucky, Shea averaged just 9.1 points, four assists, and 2.9 rebounds per game. These averages would dramatically increase by the time the season had ended, as in three conference tournament and three NCAA tournament games, the games that really mattered, Shea ended up averaging a combined 20.7 points, 6.3 assists, 5.7 rebounds, and two steals a game, making him a legitimate college basketball star. This certainly foreshadowed the incredible leap he took from his first season in the NBA to his second, and again, the reason here is pretty simple. As his Kentucky coach John Calipari has said, quote, Shea's development is a story I'll tell our players for the rest of my career. When we talk about building your own confidence and conquering yourself, Shea is the perfect example. You're talking about a kid who had the physical tools and had the potential to be in this position, but he elevated his game because he woke up at 7 a.m. every day to work out, was the best in the weight room watched film and never missed class. He's done this because he's put in the work and it's that attitude and mindset that will ensure his success at the next level. Those are some huge words from Coach Cal and again at Kentucky, Shea's play certainly backed those words up. By the time the season was over, when compared to Kevin Knox, the player the public perceived as Kentucky's star, Shea had finished with a better PER, a true shooting percentage, and had more win shares than Knox despite having a lower usage percentage. Shea was the real star of this Kentucky team, which makes it no surprise that the Knicks took Kevin Knox before him. Again, this was the best thing that could have possibly happened to Shea. This allowed Shea to develop into a potential all-star talent in just his second season behind the mentorship of Chris Paul. Which means with everything we have mentioned in today's video, the work ethic, the freakish wingspan, the offensive efficiency as a second year player. Personally, I think the combination of all of these things is going to lead to Shea Gilgis Alexander becoming an all-star level player in this league. And going forward, I really do think the Thunder have a frame franchise player on their hands. And so guys, that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, again, make sure to leave a like. It helps me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day, guys, and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. Make sure to click on one of them. Again, I know you're going to love it. And other than that, have a great day and peace.